So today's topic is one that's not the prettiest. It's not very glamorous. And I think everyone has gone through it and that is acne. Whether you are a teenager or an adult, at some point in your life, I'm sure acne has reared its little ugly face on your face. So yeah. What I wanted to do was talk about this because I myself struggled with acne for a very long time. And it wasn't until I went to beauty school to be an esthetician that I learned how you know the skin works and what's happening when we're having acne and more importantly, what's causing it. Because if you're able to find out what's causing it, you eliminate it and reduce acne on your face. So what I wanted to do today was, one, tell you what acne is. Two, some of the factors that might be causing acne. And three, well, how to treat it and make that bad boy go away. <laughs> so, with that being said, let's get into it. As I mentioned before, we're gonna start with what is acne? Acne is actually if there is breakouts apparent on your face. A lot of times people confuse this with congestion in their skin. And I'll try to get a picture and insert it right there. That's a picture of a congestion. You see how it has all those little raised bumps, but there's no white head in there? That's congestion. Whereas a breakout has a white head. So what happens there is there's a pore. I'm gonna be a pore. It's kind of shaped in that angle right there. And what happens to the pore is it gets infected. And then pus begins to fill right in the pore until it comes to the top and then it forms a white head. A lot of people love to go ahead and bust those whiteheads, but that's a horrible idea. I'm guilty as well, because what happens is, not only are you spreading the bacteria, you're also damaging the skin, which causes scarring. Also guilty. <laughs> now, there are a ton of reasons why you might be having acne, far beyond the list that I've compiled today for you. But I did want to mention a few things just to keep in mind to see if any of those apply to you. Because if they are, you might be able to take action and reduce acne in your life. One of the biggest reasons people have acne is because of hormones. This is very popular amongst teenagers and that's why we, we think, you know, once we're done with our teen years, we're like, eh, why do I have acne? But actually, hormones occur and fluctuate throughout your life, especially in women. That's why a lot of men don't have acne as adults compared to how many women do. Pregnancy is another time where you'll notice that the hormones are being adjusted and can cause breakouts. Not for everyone, but for the women who get pregnant, breakouts can appear. And that's only just because of the hormonal imbalance. Speaking of which, hormone imbalance. A lot of times we take birth control as women and while it may not be getting us knocked up, it could be messing up our hormones and we don't even know about it. So we'll see acne on our skin. Another thing could be a medication, you know, and it can just mess with your hormones and boom, acne. Another factor is the type of skin you have. So people who have oily skin, for instance, have an excess of sebum being produced through those pores. And a lot of that has to do with the increase in your pore size. That's why people who have oily skin have larger pores. So imagine you have this oil, large pores, and let a little bit of bacteria come in there, just, just a little bit of bacteria, boom, it's like a breeding ground for acne. If hormones isn't causing it, and your skin type isn't causing it, I bet any money, this one right here is causing a majority of people's acne. And it's a silent one, it just creeps right under. And that is the skincare you use and the makeup you use. Skincare and makeup, I mean, let's, let's just go with skincare first off. If you have oily skin and you're using something for a drier skin type, you're creating too much sebum in the skin. You're, you're creating too much oils. You're putting oils into the skin that the skin's like, ah, I'm done, I'm done, I'm good, thanks. The other thing is in skincare products, there are certain ingredients that may exasperate the skin, it may irritate it and cause breakouts. This is where you get that term you hear a lot in makeup, which is called comedogenic or non-comedogenic, meaning it's not supposed to break out your skin. This has to do with certain ingredients and in particular oils. How about makeup? <laughs> makeup also has ingredients, just like skincare, maybe irritating or congesting the skin. For instance, 
If you notice, a lot of women, if it's makeup, by the way, you'll notice the breakouts are right here. Right here, right in that area, and even right there in the forehead. You'll find a lot of congestion in the forehead. That, if you see congestion, which we talked about, which is the raised bumps, right here in this area, or right here, this is another common area, you know that whatever products you're using, it's not blending well with your skin, and you may wanna switch that product because the formula just might not be jiving right. How about those makeup brushes? I mean, seriously, how often do we really clean our makeup brushes? We're supposed to clean it once a week. How often do we clean it? That's for you to keep to yourself. I'm, I'm not gonna shame you. I'm not gonna shame you. Once a month, right? You have probably haven't washed it in two months? Three months? No. We're done. <laughs> Three months? <laughs> Another idea to consider is environmental factors. Do you live somewhere where it's really hot and humid and then you're thinking, I'm gonna take this fabulous hydrating foundation along with this wonderful hydrating moisturizer, plop that on your skin and then go out at 98 degrees? I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Another idea to consider is your pets. You know, a lot of uh, dog owners love when their, their dogs kiss them and lick them all over. But actually, there's a lot of bacteria on that tongue and all they could be doing is just adding to the madness that's happening on your face. This one was the big one for me and I did not know it for such a long time. But hands on your face. We touch all kinds of stuff throughout the day and washing our hands can't catch up nearly enough with the amount of things that we touch. And next thing you know, we're like this. Hmm. Hmm. Oh. Get your hands off the face. <laughs> there is dirt, there is oil, there's all kinds of stuff on your hands and you're putting it right on your face, especially bacteria. And remember, a pimple is an infected pore. So if you're taking something that has bacteria on it and then you go touch your face, Do we treat it if it's a hormonal issue it's one of the hardest ones to conquer therefore you have to be very vigilant in kind of like a process of elimination to find out what's causing your acne that's what I did with a lot of my clients when I used to work as an esthetician you know just finding out what's their lifestyle what is it from day to day that might be causing it, you know? Whether they were on a medication, whether it was birth control, whether it was something as simple as, hey chick, you're putting makeup on your face that just isn't working. Or something as simple as, hey, you know that moisturizer you're using? Mm -hmm. It's breaking you out. <laughs> using appropriate skincare. I mentioned it before, someone who has oily skin has no business using something that would be for someone who has dry skin, okay? Thankfully, we have a lot of marketing and products that allow you to see right then. It's like oily skin, normal skin, combination skin. A lot of times though, we may not even know what our skin type is. And perhaps that's another video I should make, huh? Also, using makeup, keeping in mind, just like you use skincare for makeup. So if you notice, after you clean your brushes, of course, make sure your brushes are clean. If you notice that you're using a product that is starting to, you know, cause an acne so let's say a blush a bronzer in this area and you're just like oh my gosh all my white heads are right there you might want to stop using it for a while then reintroduce it to see how your skin reacts keep the surface clean if you are a person who goes and works out and all the toxins are coming out of your pores and you're sweating wipes keep some wipes in your bag and just do 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 also for the girls who like to go to the gym with makeup on, that is a terrible, terrible idea. First of all, when you're sweating and your pores are opening up due to the heat, you know, the heat that's emitting, emitting from your body, and your pores are opening up, instead of them opening up to purge everything that's coming out of the skin, it's kind of like allowing everything that's on top of your skin to sink deeper in, causing more breakouts. So. Makeup and gym, they just don't jive together. So pay attention to the skincare that you're using, using that process of elimination, taking one item out, 
and one item at a time is very important. So take one item out, see how your skin reacts, and then reintroduce it and see if it becomes reactive, or if it gets better, toss it away or give it to somebody else and it might help. Likewise with makeup. If you're noticing that you're putting on, let's say, foundation because you have breakouts kind of like all over, switch your foundation. Make sure it's oil-free if you're a combination of oily skin. If you're using a blush, a bronzer, you're noticing congestion on the forehead, congestion here, congestion on the chin. You might want to switch your product, a different brand or maybe even a different product within that brand. Process of elimination. I'm going to let you in on a really, really big tip. If you have noticed that you've done everything, you're washing your brushes, you're using appropriate skincare, you know, for the most part, you're using makeup that's not breaking you out. One of the biggest things you can do to improve your skin dramatically is exfoliation. Cue the music. Exfoliation, <laughs> exfoliation is like a godsend, all right? Remember how I told you that with congestion, the skin is kind of like piling up on top of each other, which is very, very common for people who wear makeup a lot of times or have oily skin. What exfoliation is going to do is it's going to help that cellular turnover. So sloughing off all that dead skin to make sure it actually comes off your skin instead of packing on top of each other. Likewise, if you have breakouts, let's say, you can exfoliate and help kind of speed up that process so that it can kind of like go away basically. <laughs> also, some exfoliations will help kill the bacteria in the pore and then accelerate the healing process. There's two main types of exfoliation and that's a physical and a um, chemical exfoliation. And maybe one day I'll go into different types of exfoliations, how to exfoliate your skin because it is, it is really what has saved my skin. It is what's helped improve the clarity and help accelerate the healing process, help even out skin tone. Exfoliation is awesome. Period. If you have acne breakouts, I wouldn't suggest to use a physical exfoliation, which means something that has crystals or beads or sugar scrubs. Don't use that if you have actual whiteheads. I'd go for something that has beta hydroxy acid, um, which is basically something that you'll put on your skin, like a mask or a serum, and it's going to help exfoliate the skin without physically doing so. Get it? Now, if you're someone who has congestion on the skin, raised skin, bumpy skin, you can use a BHA or beta hydroxy acid is what it's called, like a mask, a serum, or you can use a physical exfoliation, like I mentioned, the crystals and sugar scrubs and all that other jazz. Both are very effective, but if you have breakouts with a whitehead, definitely, definitely use BHAs or some exfoliation like a retinol even. I know that this topic is not going to be a one size fits all. I am only telling you things as an esthetician and what I've learned over the many, many years and seeing clients and going to school for this stuff, what can help between factors and being proactive. But there will be times where, especially when it's hormone acne, which is the hardest one to treat, that even all the advice that I can give you is not gonna work out. And you're gonna wanna work closely with a doctor to help figure out what's going on with these hormones, whether it's pregnancy, whether it's your birth control, or any other factors that can be influencing it. And I say this only because I understand how frustrating it is. I've lived with acne a good portion of my life, many, many years, and to this day, I have reactive skin. I mean, you put something on my skin that isn't gonna jive well, and I break out like that. So I understand, I empathize with you if you are living with acne, even if it's once in a while, it's so frustrating. Even more so when it leaves scars on your face, I know how, um, I don't know how embarrassing that can be or how it builds to your insecurities. So I just really hope that this video is helpful to you. I'm gonna, I'm emotional, I swear. Anytime I'm like talking from my heart, I just get really emotional, but I really, really do sympathize and empathize with you who are dealing with this because even though it seems quite superficial, it really can impact people's lives when they're going with it on a day-to-day -day basis and being just so frustrated and just feeling like you don't know what to do. So this video is for you. I hope that it helps. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have questions, which I expect you will, please leave your comments below. 
Give me a thumbs up if you like it. If you don't, then move it along. <laughs> I am just here to help you guys in any ways that I can, sharing my knowledge and information with you all, and it is a pleasure to do so. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.